<clears throat> so tell me when you went to Nam. I went to Vietnam in 1971. <clears throat> when did you come back? 72? 72. You remember what months? I think it was March. That you come back? I, yeah, and I left in March. Okay. You were with the Army? Yeah, I was with the Army. Were you drafted or did you sign uh, up? I was drafted. How old were you? Uh, I was 19 when I went to Vietnam. Oh, you were young, weren't you? A baby. <laughs> 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 to me, it was a baby. Who were you with? Who'd you go with? I was with the 173rd Airborne and the American Elder Division. What was your MOS? I was 11 Bravo. 11 B. 11 B. Is that what you stayed the entire time? Uh huh. That's an infantryman. What's the highest medals you've gotten? Uh, silver star. Okay. Any purple hearts or any of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, purple heart, yeah. One, two? One. One. So did y'all go over to Vietnam by a ship? Uh, plane. Plane. <clears throat> Where did y'all land? Uh, I landed in uh, Cameron Bay, just north of uh, Saigon. What was your first impression of Vietnam when you got off the plane? Uh, well, Vietnam was uh, it was a tropical, like a tropical land to me, a tropical visitation country. That's what it seemed like to me when I first landed, except for a few days when the shells began to fall. <laughs> and it changed. Wasn't like, tropical then, was it? No, it was. <laughs> we are not here for vacation. What was your first encounter with the VCs? Uh, my first encounter was not direct, it was indirect. When they fired on the uh, end processing center that I was in, they, they shelled it with rockets. And that was about two weeks after the encounter. They didn't wait too long, did they? No. What was your first direct contact with them? Uh, my direct contact with them was about after, I would say about five months in country. Uh, and we had our, one of our posts uh, almost overran. They attack you? Yeah. <clears throat> what was it like? Uh, well, to me, I was sitting on top of a APC, which is a part of a tank outfit, and which I was so dumb and didn't hadn't seen any uh, direct contact. They were shooting rocket launchers directly, just bypass my line of sight, and I didn't know what it was until some guy that had been there sometime said, "You know what that is." And it was hitting the ground, and he said, you got incoming. And so that was my wake-up call that we were getting hit. How 
How'd you feel when you realized that you were getting hit? Uh, it's a kind of a shaky feeling to realize that you are actually under attack. <clears throat> because you start to uh, automatically thoughts start to run through your mind. Why am I, you know, under all of this uh, uh, oppressed action here? Do you remember how long it lasted? Uh, it lasted for uh, about, I would say, about an hour. Seemed like a long hour, didn't it? Yeah. Seemed like a half a day. So when it was over, <clears throat> what did it look like around camp? Well, everything... It looked like uh, it was a different picture from what you seen prior to the attack. Everything was in place and in order. Uh, and after the attack, it was all shambles. You had fires everywhere. Uh, you had tanks on fire, armored personnel carriers on fire, and people wounded, and a lot of noise and chaos. Do you remember how many of your guys were killed that time? I think it was about uh, 10 guys had killed in that attack. you remember how many VCs? Uh, no. That's the thing about it. You never, you you don't never got keep any count. count. You, never, you never get any counts of the VC because they you don't usually care. They, no, they usually police their bodies up. They did a good policing job. Tell me about your Silver Star. How did you, you earn it? Well, it was an APC that was, well, and I, we parked in, in the 90 position. It was a 360 degree circle, and we were in a circle. And one of the tracks had uh, mortar rounds and so forth on it. And so what I did, I was just uh, more or less ran up to that track and got in the uh, driver compartment and moved it out of uh, the line of uh, uh, the other tracks and moved it out of firing position. And so that was one of the reasons I think I got it. What about your Purple Heart? Uh, purple Heart? Uh, well, I received that from some, after the attack, some uh, rounds were coming in and I get hit by some shrapnel in the uh, hip part of my body. Was that the attack you were talking about? Yeah. Is that the only time you guys were attacked? Uh, maybe two, two and a half other times. Did the others last as long? Uh, no. I think the others were just more of a harass, harassment tactic. Do you have any problems with your hips or anything now because of the shrapnel? Uh, no, I don't. Although I am drawing disability, but it's not from uh, combat wounds. Hmm. Is it from any of your service? Uh, no.
Do you have any problems with um, any type of illnesses or anything from your Agent Orange? You were exposed to Agent Orange, I'm assuming. I was, but I'm trying to get that uh, disability, add to my disability, but I haven't had any success with it. What kind of problems do you have to that? Uh, Agent Orange uh, has such strange type. Uh, I think it's more or less leading on to diabetes with me. I think that's one of the problems. And uh, it could be I'm, I have a, uh, I uh, encounter a case of high blood pressure after I got ready to retire from the military. I think that was brought on by that agent on my job, so. Yeah, that almost became a daily exposure almost. Yeah, you it was. And agent on after that uh, guy sprayed that cunt in country with that uh, herbicide, it was, you were just, if you, if you, if you just touch, put it in country, you were uh, exposed to agent on But they told you guys that it wasn't harmful. Oh, they said no. And they, that's what they told us. It won't hurt you. It won't bother you. It's help kill the weeds. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> help kill everybody. The weeds and us. What kind of encounters did you have with the women and children of the Vietnamese? Well, I just had a basically a normal uh, uh, encounter with the women and children of uh, Vietnam because they washed our clothes and we bought food on, on a daily basis and stuff. And so you had uh, just the normal interaction with them. You hear a lot of Vietnam vets talk about how starved looking they were because of the VCs. Did you get that impression? Uh, not really. Not the one we were around. And we picked up a couple of infants uh, with a, a few of the encounters we had. And we had to bring them along with us and so they had to follow along with us and that was kind of not normal, you know, uh, hauling around an infant. What you end up doing with them? Uh, we ended up uh, uh, turning them over to uh, some Red Cross agency. Where'd you do your basic training at? Uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. Where'd you do your AIT? Uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. <laughs> Didn't go very far, did no, you? No, right up the street. <laughs> Pick up yourself, Mr. Polk, and we're going to walk you right up the road. And I went to Airborne School in Fort Benning, Georgia. Okay. Did you ever go to any specialized Vietnam training? Uh, I went to uh, uh, Long Range Reconnaissance School in Vietnam. So what was an average day like for you over there? Well, to me it was a strenuous day from 